What's up, everybody? You already know who it is. It's Drip God Daryl, and I'm back at you guys with another thing. Now, in today's video, I want to talk about a player who was overhyped and also whose hard work didn't pay off. Now, if you watched my video yesterday, you know I made a video about just grinding and how working hard in the wrong field will not get you the maximum potential of that hard work or that hard work does not pay off if you're doing that hard work in the wrong field. Now, to actually show an example of that, let's take a bit, let's take a look, sorry about that guys, at this video by Pro Sport and the name of the video is called What Really Happened to Julian Newman Overhyped. Let's take a look at this video, let's react to it, and this video will prove my point exactly. But, let's take a look, I'm done talking, let's let Pro Sport explain who Julian Newman is and how he was overhyped and how all his hard work didn't pay off. But, let's get it guys. Julian Newman is a polarizing figure in the basketball world. He has been heavily hyped since a very young age, but he has ultimately struggled to find success at levels of basketball higher than typical prep ball. So why is it that such a famous young basketball prodigy hasn't been able to reach his potential as a player? Welcome back to the channel for all things pro sport. Keep it locked in right here to find out what really happened to Julian Newman. Julian Newman grew up in Orlando, Florida and began playing basketball when he was very young. When he was only three years old, Julian's dad, Jamie, started him off on his basketball journey by having him play in basketball games with older players. The training that his dad put him through was pretty intense, to say the least. Okay, guys, first and foremost, y'all see how hard he was grinding at age three. He was working hard to try to be an NBA player, but let's continue. Julian was often required to make a total of 500 shots during his daily practice. Out of these 500 shots, 100 were free throws, 200 were floaters, and 200 were jump shots. That is a lot of shots for a young player, but it's safe to say that it paid off. After several more years of this training, Julian moved from a public school education to a private school education. This was due in part to his dad starting as the basketball coach and becoming a teacher at Downey Christian School. There Julian began his meteoric rise as a prep player. At first, Julian played on the middle school team at Downey, but his domination at this level was so complete, he once put up 91 points in a single game that he was quickly moved up to the high school varsity team. Now, if you think he seemed a little out of place in this role, you're not alone. Julian was only 4 feet 5 inches tall and was diminutive at only 70 pounds. Plus, he was only 11 years old and still in the 5th grade. With his varsity jersey hanging off him, Newman started to transform both his own abilities and the team at Downey Christian School. In this first varsity year, he put up an average of 12.4 points, 11 assists, and 4.3 steals. Although he wasn't the tallest, strongest, or most experienced player, he used his quickness, ball handling ability, and confidence to propel his team to an excellent 21-6 record. On top of that, he led the entire state of Florida in assists, and he was only 11 years old. The hype train started to roll out of control, and for good reason. Julian Newman was showing the flashes of a basketball prodigy and the national media took notice. Articles began to appear in major media outlets like the Huffington Post, Sports Illustrated, and the New York Times. With the print media already fawning over Newman, the visual media outlets jumped in as he appeared on daytime talk shows. Steve All right, guys, let me rewind it real quick. All right, right here. Let me wait for this. All right. With the print media already right flying here, over Newman. Pause it right here. As you guys can see, the dude in the orange, I think that's Julian Newman's father. Does he look tall? Not really. He look like he a solid 5'7", five, 5'6", five, somewhere around that. But let's continue. The visual media outlets jumped in as he appeared on daytime talk shows. Steve Harvey, The Ellen DeGeneres Show, and Good Morning America. However, Newman's greatest amount of hype came from his viral YouTube videos that showed his incredible handles and daring basketball acts despite his tiny size. Throughout his next few years of high school or middle school, Julian's profile continued to grow. 
He averaged 13.6 points and 10.5 assists per game in his 6th grade year and then went on to average 19.8 points, 10.2 assists, and 3.2 steals per game as a 7th grader. Along the way, he became the youngest player in the history of high school basketball to record 1,000 career points on a varsity team. Also, he kept showing out on YouTube, becoming known for his basketball ability as much for his on-court confidence and attitude, which some observers considered cocky. Controversy seemed to follow Newman, partially for his perceived cockiness and maybe from some amount of jealousy and envy, but also for his treatment as a child star and his dad's relentless marketing of his son. It was his dad who helped to get his son a spot on the aforementioned media programs, as well as coaching him. All right, I'm going to pause this. Now, as you guys can see, there are a lot of similarities to how LaMelo Ball and Lonzo Ball's dad raised them up, you know, raised them up real hard. Plenty of marketing and promotion from the dad, but there are key differences. Lonzo, LaMelo, and uh, Leangelo, they all had genetic gifts that would give them more of an opportunity to get into the NBA. They're all, I think LaMelo is like 6'8", Lonzo is like 6'6", and I think Leangelo is like 6'7", somewhere around there, 6'5", somewhere around there. And Julian Newman is 5'7". But let's continue his son and allowing him to get at least some of the opportunities that he got as a varsity basketball player at a smaller private school. Some resentment began to build internally at Downey where some players, parents, and other observers thought that Julian was handling the ball too much and taking unnecessary shots. These issues and more became a crucial part of Newman's ongoing story. On the court, Newman continued his excellent play. By his sophomore season, Newman was looking like even more of a star, averaging 34.7 points, 7 assists, 5 rebounds, and 4 steals per game. He was continuing his incredible ball handling abilities that bordered on the circus-like, as well as his great inside shooting. However, he was still only 5.5 feet tall, hardly an ideal size for a men's basketball player at any level, especially above the high school level. In addition, Downey was struggling to win at a high level. The team ended up with a losing record of 19 wins and 26 losses in Julian's junior year. As a result, Julian's dad Jamie started his own team and high school called Prodigy Prep. Prodigy Prep was far from the level of a typical prep basketball program or of a typical high school. Instead of going to classes in a classroom or a lecture hall, Julian and other students enrolled in a virtual school, while Jamie helped out as a former teacher himself. Similarly, lacking an official facility and practice space, the Prodigy players and coaches resorted to practicing at the YMCA on Orlando. There, they had to share space with other players, even those who just played recreationally. It was far from an ideal situation, but many players either followed Julian from Downey or moved over independently to get a little bit of extra shine from Julian's spotlight. Prodigy prep was more of the same for Julian. Although he continued to dominate and put up incredible numbers, the team failed to achieve success. This could have been because of the target on their back with their viral superstar on the roster, or it could have been the fact that this was just a new basketball program. So for all of his stats, Julian had to be in high demand from collegiate programs, right? Well, that depends on who you ask. The general consensus was that certain college programs were willing to take on Newman, but larger programs were worried about the amount of shots Julian was taking, as well as his limited size and focus on showy ball handling. However, Julian expressed that he was getting offers from lots of D1 programs, as well as interest from blue-chip basketball programs like Florida and Kansas. In addition, Jamie stated that Julian already had 15 Division I programs. However, coaches from both of the aforementioned programs, among others, denied interest in Newman. In the end, he only had offers from lower-level Division I programs, and likely not those that would further his NBA dreams. Instead, both Jamie and Julian said publicly that Julian would likely follow in the footsteps of LaMelo Ball and play overseas rather than attend college in order to further his chances at an NBA career. The Newmans named a number of different countries and leagues where Julian was considering playing, including Australia, Italy, China, Japan, Germany, and even the G League. However, they continued to contradict themselves in public appearances and furthered confusion about Julian's next steps. This just furthered negative opinions about Newman among the general public who felt that Newman either lied or misrepresented his collegiate offers. So where is Julian Newman right now? It's difficult to say. In the end, he neither committed to any Division I school or joined any overseas team. It's very Alright, so we pretty much get the idea. Julian Newman 
He put in so much work to try to get into the NBA. But as we all know, genetics are a bitch. No. Like I said, he put in plenty of work. He was working hard trying to become an NBA player at the age of three. Three, guys. Three. And all that hard work didn't pay off because he was working hard in the wrong field. You're 5'7". Now, I know that there have been some abnormalities. We got Spud Webb. We got Isaiah Thomas. I think Spud Webb is like 5'3". I think Isaiah Thomas is 5'9". But those are outliers. They are outliers, guys. We all know that they're outliers. And they're just different beasts. Let's keep it real. If we compare Julian Newman's body type and things like that to Spud Webb's and Isaiah Thomas's, they're completely different. Isaiah Thomas is big for his height. He like my size or probably bigger for his height. For him being 5'9". You know, Spud Webb was ripped and had crazy athletic ability. I think at 5'4", he could dunk. That's insane. But, like I said, man, if you work hard, if you put in hard work in the wrong field, more than likely it won't pay off. Like I said before, he was grinding at three. Imagine if he put in that same work at three to become a runner back. Now, as you guys can see, the average height for a runner back is 5'8". He's 5'7", so he definitely had a chance to, you know, become a great runner back. And as you guys could see from the video, he was very quick. He was very, you know, nimble, fast. So all those things would have fit him being an NFL runner back. All he probably needs to do is just, you know, add on some extra muscle. But like I said, man, if you put in hard work, but it's in the wrong field, more than likely it won't pay off. That's fact, man. That's fact. I know a lot of people might not like to hear it, but it's fact. But hey, if you didn't watch my video yesterday, go take a look at it. I pretty much explained the same thing in that video yesterday, but in today's video, I did want to bring some sports into it because I know that all my subscribers do love the sports videos. Tell me what you guys think about this video. Tell me what you guys think about Julian Newman. And also tell me what you think about what I'm saying. Does hard work pay off even if it's in the wrong field? Or does hard work pay off when you're in the right field using your genetic advantages to your advantage? You tell me down below. But with that, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm out, guys. Peace.